Hello everyone, I'm Omar from Educraft and today I am very excited to introduce this new video snippet series on how to get started with DREAM, the long range IP mesh we have just launched. In this video snippet series, we will be walking you through step-by-step -step tutorials on how to get started with DREAM, reviewing the contents of the DREAM development kit, setting up simple DREAM networks and connecting a DREAM network to the cloud. DREAM works on both Windows and Linux. Most of the process is the same on both operating systems However, there are a few key differences when using RIM on Linux, which will be highlighted in a special video for Linux. Before we start, we will give you a brief introduction to the RIM network. RIM is Radiocraft's wireless IP mesh network, completely embedded in an RF module. RIM is a low-power, long-range network with end-to-end -end IP connectivity that can cover an area up to 40 by 40 km squared. The RIM network includes three node types, the border router, the mesh router, and the leaf node. The border router is the root of the network, and it connects the RIM network to the outside world. The mesh router is the full-featured node that can forward data to and from its parent nodes to its child nodes, and it also collects and forwards data to local sensors and actuators. The mesh router is the node that creates the mesh. The leaf is a special node type that is used for very low power nodes. It sits at the end of the network and has no mesh routing functionality. It collects and forwards data to and from local sensors and actuators up to its parent node. The leaf node can be put to sleep for very low power consumption, ideal for battery operated sensor nodes. RIM also includes EC, where an EC application is always running on the module to tailor the module's behavior to the customer's unique requirements. In its simplest form, the EC application is just configuring the radio network, the module's hardware interfaces, and defines when to read and write to those interfaces. We will talk more about EC in upcoming videos. Now that you've gotten a short introduction to the RIM network, let's take a look at the RIM development kit. For further support, you can read the RIM development kit user manual, which can be found in the document library on our website. This is how a RIM development kit looks like. As you open the box, you can find a letter describing the contents of the development kit. Then we have three antennas with the bigger one to be connected to the border router. One power adapter. two A to C USB connectors, two A to micro USB connectors, one Ethernet cable, and then we have our board with the first being the sensor board. The sensor board comes equipped with seven industry standard sensors, such as a temperature and humidity sensor. The sensor board is factory set up as leaf node. The development board, which has no external sensors. The development board is factory set up as mesh router. And lastly, we have the border router board with Ethernet connectivity. The border router board is set up as root node. All three boards come pre-programmed to set up and run a simple RIM test network. The readings of one of the sensors of the sensor board is forwarded to the border router and the LED on the development board will blink when it's connected to the network. Now that we have reviewed the contents of the development kit, Let's go ahead and set up a RIM network using the pre-programmed board. The border router is connected via the two A to C USB connectors, one for the power and one for data. Note the COM port number where you connect the border router board. The development and sensor boards are connected to a power supply via the A to micro USB cable. Once you have the network up and running, you should see the blue LED blinking on the development board. To view the sensor reading, 
we need to use a terminal emulator program like PuTTY, TerraTerm, Yacht, or similar. In this demonstration, we use PuTTY. Set the baud rate to 115200 and the correct COM port of the border router. Once connected with the terminal emulator program, you will see sensor reading in the terminal window. Thank you for watching our video snippet series on how to get started with RIM. In this first video, we showed you how to set up a RIM development kit. As a next step in the process to get started with RIM, we will show you how to run a RIM network using the examples provided in the SDK. This topic will be covered in the next video of this video snippet series, so stay tuned. Thank you for choosing RIM and RadioCraft, and we hope you have a great day. See you soon.